Whoa, right into frame. No mic today, going simple. In this video, we're gonna talk about money master the game book review. Coming up. Wait a minute. We're not even gonna do an intro. We're just gonna shoot from the hip on this one. Now, I picked this book up a while ago because I wanted to learn a little bit more about investing. Um, I know on my channel we talk about affiliate marketing and getting an education on making money online and building a business. But I wanted to review this because if you have a business and you're not putting a something something away personally, you might wind up in a situation where you do not have the assets you need when you're 80 or 90 years old. Something pointed out in this book is um, a lot of people wonder what it's gonna be like if they die and they think about life insurance and those kind of things and you know maybe they procrastinate on a will and they finally get it done but they never ask the question what if I live? Nobody ever asks that question. And they wind up waking up 87 years old and they fell down and need their hip to be replaced and have to go into old folks home, you know? Uh, so, seven simple steps to financial freedom. I've got a lot of different notes here, but I wanna be quick about it. He essentially breaks down some of the myths about money and how compounding is interest works and the sooner you start, the better. Um, he uses a few stories where he talks about two people starting out, 120, and I think one was uh, either 30 or 40 years old. One starts out at 20 years old and invests for 20 years and then stops and then waits till they're at retirement age, which is another uh, 20 or 30 years. And the other one starts out later on in life and invests for 20 years right up until he retires. You think they would have the same amount of money, but actually the first one winds up with, I think, several times more assets. Winds up becoming a multi-millionaire, and the other one had about, I think, less than a million for retirement. So he illustrates that in this point. He lays out a lot of um, missing fees that aren't really explained to people when they purchase a, a, a Roth or something in an IRA or their 401k at work. He goes over um, a lot of the hidden stuff that you don't know about, a lot of the sticker price fees that you would see on a lot of stocks and bonds and things that you just don't, your pe people don't tell you these things. Your HR person, it doesn't tell you these things. Um, the person who actually manages your 401k, the owner of your company is actually the, uh, the fiduciary, the person responsible for putting your best interests first. But the person selling it that product to him isn't necessarily a fiduciary, they're just a broker, and he, he outlines the difference between a stock broker and a fiduciary, someone who can sell you a suitable asset, which is essentially if you have a pulse in money and you're above 18, he can sell you pretty much anything, or a fiduciary who is legally, um, legally obliged to put your best interest first to disclose all of their fees, like we do as affiliate marketers, we disclose anything that we're selling, like I will have an affiliate link to this for my Amazon account where you can pick it up in the description below and I will make a small condition, uh, commission at no charge. That is the same thing that a fiduciary does with your investment accounts. And they charge usually charge a flat fee and they legally have to tell you all of these things up front. And you, they have to be transparent with everything or they'll lose their license, could go to jail. A stock broker doesn't need to do that. Uh, he also goes over asset allocation, the weighting of your stocks, and allocation is probably something they, you might, might have heard about, you might not have heard about. It is just the balancing of what the, the type of things that you own. If you own stock, a stock is ownership in a company. You're a part owner now. Uh, in exchange for that, you could get capital gains, which is just the stock price going up, or appreciation, or dividends, which is... Uh, at the end of the year or a quarter, if there's profits, they'll distribute it out to their owners. Uh, that is a dividend. You, um, it's all proportionally based. A bond is like a loan. You take your money and put it into something and loan it to a government or a company for a flat rate in return. Uh, I hope I'm not confusing you. A lot of that's explained in this book. He has another book out that's a little bit slimmer. This is like 600 something pages, but it, it actually is pretty simple content. And there's a lot of illustrations in here. It goes over, you know, a lot of funny little explanations like that. That actually, yeah, 
there's the uh, an asset allocation there. If you are thinking about retirement and you want to invest for the long term, this is definitely a good book to pick up. Uh, the ending chapters cover um, personal interviews he did with people like Paul Tudor Jones, Carl Icahn. Um, I think there's like 10 or 12. I've already forgotten. Jeez. Anyway, great book. I recommend that you pick up a copy. You can grab it in the description below. Again, I'm an affiliate. Um, if you are still considering starting your own business from home part-time, I'll leave a link to um, kevinjpino.com forward slash success where I can introduce you to a free, um, a free video that will introduce you to a program you can get involved in. If not, jump on my email list at kevinjpino.com. I'll throw you up my free ebook. Uh, pick a copy up of this. And let's see, one last thing. I will give a shout out in my next video to the first person who can comment down below what is Tony Robbins's first book what is the name of that book and I'll give you a shout out in my next video until then don't leave click on one of these things on the sides here